welcome to Graphic Online News in Brief. In the headlines, project to mitigate flooding and solid waste management challenges in Accra underway. Ghana Statistical Service begins 2021 census enumeration. Kumasi Central Authorities identified tree stumps as cause of last week's flooding in the Garden City. NDC demands resignation of Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Yebo Adame. And police on a manhunt for a soldier who allegedly shot a cabbie in an attempt to snatch his car. News in Brief is brought to you by... Download your Graphic News Plus now and choose your preferred package daily, weekly, monthly and annually and access free news on various interest areas as well. Graphic News Plus, connecting people through news. And now the News in Brief. The Minister of Works and Housing, Francis Asensu Boache, says government is collaborating with the World Bank to implement the Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Development Project, GARID, to mitigate flood risk and address solid waste management challenges in the Odor drainage basin. The minister who was speaking during a media briefing in Accra on Sunday, June 27, also says that an early warning system for floods is being developed to enhance flood resilience in communities within the Odor basin and beyond. He says while efforts were underway to procure a contractor for the dredging activities under the Garrett project, dredge masters will continue with these dredging activities to mitigate flood risk in the Odor Basin this rainy season. The government is currently collaborating with the World Bank to implement the Ghana Accra, the Greater Accra Resilient and Integrated Project, which will mitigate flood risk, address solid waste management challenges in the outdoor drainage basin. Additionally, a flood early warning system is being developed to enhance flood resilience of communities within the basin and beyond. While efforts are underway to procure a contractor for the deferred and maintenance dredging activities under the Garrett project, dredge masters will continue with dredging activities to make room for storm water and mitigate flood risks in the outdoor basin this rainy season. Our priority drain program will also be targeting other river basins across the country. The Ghana Statistical Service on Sunday, June 27, started with the actual counting of people for the 2021 population and housing census. The first group of persons were counted between the hours of 6 p.m. on June 27 to 6 a.m. on June 28, known as the census night. Those counted on the night include people in makeshift structures, open spaces, transport terminals and those who spent short stays in places such as hotels, guest houses and hospitals. The exercise is being undertaken by 60,000 enumerators across the country. The government statistician Professor Samuel Kobunainim, speaking during a press conference ahead of census night on Sunday, June 27, said, the enumeration of people in long-stay institutions and households will begin from Monday, June 28 to Sunday, June 11. All is ready for us to start the enumeration of some targeted persons tonight and the enumeration of households and institutions will start tomorrow. Work will start concurrently in all our 51,922 enumeration areas. I need to emphasize that this exercise is a 14-day exercise. We do not expect to count all persons in Ghana tonight. We do not expect to count all persons in Ghana um, tomorrow. This exercise is going to run to the 11th of July 2021. As we move along through this platform, we're going to provide updates on where we have completed and we are urging persons in Ghana that on the 8th of July, if you've not been enumerated, please make use of our call center number and the numbers are 0800-426-426. This is our toll-free number and we urge persons in Ghana to take advantage of it and call us starting the 8th of July if they have not been enumerated. Professor Enin, who later joined some enumerators to mark the census night at Kwame Nkrumah's circle, thanked the public for their cooperation during the listening exercise, urging them to exhibit the same support for the enumeration. The enumerators that have so far engaged with the chalking and the listening exercise, I want to express my deepest appreciation. The data that we have so far is very encouraging, very promising, and shows that as we move into the enumeration exercise, we're going to get the right data to inform our development policies. And to the public, 
we request for your sustained commitment to the process. City authorities in Kumasi say the central business district, particularly the Kijitia area which got flooded last week, was as a result of a number of timber locks which were strangely deposited in storm drains. The locks blocked the drains under the new market at Kijitia, which also houses a major lorry terminal. Five big locks were removed from one section of the drains in the Kijitia area. Although the authorities are unable to tell how the locks got into the drains, they maintain that it was the cause of last week's floods. The central business district around the Kejitia runabout has not been noted for flooding, especially as the new market was recently constructed. The Opposition National Democratic Congress is demanding the immediate resignation of the Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Godfrey Yebo Adame. The party says the recent $170 million judgment debt against Ghana following the cancellation of a power purchase agreement with the Ghana Power Generation Company shows he's unfit for his office. Clearly, the current Attorney General, Godfrey Yabo Adame, has proven to be very incompetent and sloppy as far as this matter is concerned. His desperate attempt to extricate himself from blame and shift blame to her former boss, to his former boss, Madame Gloria Kufu, and past government officials who left office about five years ago, is shameful and unfortunate to see the least. In any serious jurisdiction, the Attorney General of Freddie Guadame and the Solicitor General, who are paid by Ghanaians to defend the interests of the state in legal matters, and who were actually involved in the conduct of this case, would have been held accountable or resigned by now. In our last story, the Western Regional Police Command is on a manhunt for an Air Force soldier identified only as Aircraftman 1. The said soldier is allegedly to have shot a taxi driver in the abdomen in an attempt to snatch his taxi. Information available to Graphic Online indicates that the said Air Force aircraftman was on duty last Thursday but left under the pretext of going to find food to eat. He has since not returned. Sources close to the police have told Graphic Online that the weapon, a Mark IV rifle found in the taxi and which the driver claims the soldier used to shoot him, belongs to the Air Force and that it was assigned to the said aircraftman one for guard duties. The weapon is in police custody as part of ongoing investigation. Narrating his ordeal at his bedside at the hospital, the victim, Raymond Autry, said the suspect boarded his taxi and asked to be sent to Kojokrum, second D, and back to Kojokrum. He says on their way back to Kojokrum, the suspect shot at his lower abdomen upon reaching an obscure stretch of the road. He then rushed out of the vehicle and moved towards the driver's side to attempt to pull him out. However, the driver said he sensed danger, mastered courage, and sped off. Thank you for watching. We'll see you again tomorrow with another edition. Stay safe and protect yourself from COVID-19. For more news, visit graphic.com.gh or log on to Facebook at Daily Graphic and on YouTube at GraphicGH. I am Juliet Echa Safo. Subscribe now.